not showing the slideshow. Here's Melinda. Hey, honey. Yeah. Tell them it's okay for now. Say, I can't hear you. Can you talk loud? Hello? Yeah, just speak really loud. Okay, okay. All right. Your screensaver went on. <laughs> and this is so the biggest snafu of the whole event. <laughs> it's on my computer and it's on three seconds because I was panicking. <laughs> continue doing that until... We'll switch until presentation time. That's up to you. I mean, I think it would be better for you to... My password also locks, so I'm just manually... Yeah, well, I'll be here for, like... I'll be here for the entire time, so... Yeah. That, I think that'd be it's fine. It's more of the smoothness of the start, but I think it's okay. We'll Can just... Like, like, small, possibly redundant reminder. What's that? Make sure you emphasize the team that that was a real wedding that they are actually married, because I don't think that's okay. Thank you for your input. Yes. How are we advancing our own slides, or what is? You can use the dingus. We have a clicker. You can Fantastic. use the dingus. Fantastic. You can practice. No, it's soon to you. Oh, is it? It's soon it, to it. So, I'm gonna let this yours keep playing for another minute because okay. people are excited. But so we can do we can do handheld mic. That's my preference. Okay. Exactly. What is the handheld. technical problem? Okay. There is none. I, oh no, we ruined the video there. Too bad. I'm. So it's okay. No, no, no. You can take it. It's okay. So you'll be the first to speak. Yeah. No, I'm passing uh, it on to you. And then you'll just say, yeah, pass great. it on to you. Uh, pass it on to me. I have to say okay, seriously. You. I'll introduce myself. I'll say that I'm Corey Anderson with Left Out. And we're here to wrap up the 2020 Literally Hunt. What is your, like, title of the Left Out? I'm the producer. I know because it's about you can just say, just say, we'd like to work. Kind of look at the left out, and I'll introduce myself. Okay, that sounds good. Yep. Make sure you have the proper stage to walk. Switch over to mine in a moment. I'm just going to ask people to turn off Wi-Fi again, type thing. Or like, like, oh, that's only for like wireless mics. Like, that's for the stream. Right? I think it's fine. We're fine. I think we should do our own slide stuff. Like we have speaker notes and everything. Do that. Okay. If you wouldn't mind continuing to do this, that's great. I, I need to get my. I'm going to send him another email. I was asked if we could make an announcement for people to start getting seated so we can yes. assess. All right. Good morning, folks. We're going to get started in a couple of minutes, but I have, some Im I have some important information about health and safety to share with you all. Please start to find your seats. We want to get started in a few minutes. 
you might notice that this auditorium has a fixed capacity. You may sit in the seat, but you may not stand or sit on the stairs. You may stand in the back of the room as well. And if you cannot find space, we're very sorry, but this is being streamed live on MIT Student Cable. So please, again, start to find your seats. Your seat needs to be an actual seat, not the stairs. And if you cannot find a seat, there's some room to stand in the back. And we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Is that loud enough? Is that loud enough? It's not loud enough. Okay. Really? Well, you're on the stage. I don't know. That's weird. There's a lot of. It'll be fine. Are we gonna hit fire today? So, Evan? I'm going to throw you on. Yep. Do you have a coin here? So, uh, right after this slide. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, and you're just going to be, this is what's going to be behind, no, right after this slide. Then you, this is what's going to be behind you while you talk briefly yeah. about the event. And then, and then you roll. Yep. What's wrong? So they don't want audio on their videos. The final video. I, the, but Does mute work? work? Can we do that? Yeah. I think we can just mute just for the okay. finale video. I think we, we plan it for Todd talking. Um, oh, okay. Play by play and, and there might and he might be paused in the video. That's just not having that. I don't know. <laughs> eh, everything's good. Mute might work. We'll find out. Yeah. What's the worst thing going to happen? How's my hair? How's my hair? Do I look, do I look yeah. like me? Great. I like you should have worn your sleep defied shirt from yesterday. That's very appropriate. You know, yeah. All right, I'm going to pull the plug in your thing. Do you want me to go ahead and do that? I'm going to switch over to this. You ready to start? Yeah. Boom, boom. All right, I can do that. I just, want, I just want to make sure I have the mute up here because I'm going to have to run up a mute during Todd's video. Please find a seat. Make sure it's a seat, not the stairs. And again, if you have, cannot find space in the auditorium, we are live streaming on MIT Student Cable. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to wrap up for the Mystery Hunt 2020. 
Mais... Uh, my name is Julia Wagner, and I'm the president of Mystery Hunt and Puzzle Club at MIT. Uh, so at this point, I'm really happy to welcome uh, and hand it over to Left Out to tell you a bit more about this year's hunt specifically. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Wow, what an amazing weekend. I hope everyone had a really great time. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a few minutes to walk everyone through just to remember the journey that we've been on. It's been only a couple of days, but there was a wedding. Right, and when we of course then learned that what was really exciting for them was to go on their honeymoon at Penny Park. <laughs> Although we learned that if we don't, if Penny Park was about to close, oh no, unless you all generated a lot of buzz about the park. So you did generate a lot of buzz. You entered Penny Park, here's the map, and you began exploring the lands. You explored the, the initial lands, Grand Castle, Storybook Forest, and the traditional uh, lands and uh, attractions and even some of the more traditional featured attractions. Then as you moved on, you, you discovered that there were some more experimental <laughs> spaces with uh, uh, more, uh, less, uh, more atypical featured attractions and uh, structures within them. We'll get into those in just a minute. As you wandered around the park, you encountered various Characters, you even visited some of the Looney Tunes, and we're going to see a little video of some of this right now. Spirits long dead, turn this ball red. Ah, yes, wonderful. What three words describe the sound of no, the <laughs> Smoot, class of 1962. It's been a great pleasure for me to participate in the 2020 MIT Mystery Hunt. And of course, during the weekend, there were a number of events that happened at, uh, every now and again. And for that, I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Evan. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Well, you guys did an awful lot to, uh, to help Penny Park over the weekend uh, on Friday. Many of you attended the Midway, uh, uh, played our games, ate our food, uh, uh, took home a lot of free prizes. Um, I, I do want to uh, especially thank uh, a few people for creating the Midway, um, to the team, Summer, Jonathan, uh, Chris, and Tyler, uh, if we could. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, Chris and Tyler, in, in particular, built the Midway uh, in Virginia and drove it up here. Uh, so, pretty impressive. Uh, the next morning, uh, several of you uh, w woke up or, or stayed up and attended, and attended the supporting character breakfast, um, uh, uh, which we want to uh, particularly thank um, for both of those, um, in addition to all of the, uh, all, all, all the members of Left Out working on them, um, both of our sponsors uh, that I know we'll get to in a moment um, for the snack breaks during those and, and keeping everybody well fed. Uh, but in particular for the supporting character breakfast, I also want to thank uh, and, and give credit uh, to, uh, to Charlie, Justin, and Jessen uh, for the great work they did. Thank you. Uh, later that day, uh, some, some of you uh, stopped by to the Build a Wand workshop uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to take home a little souvenir from your times in the park. Um, and we want to thank uh, especially Brent and Kevin uh, for putting that event together for us. In the spirit of helping out the park, uh, many of you showed up and absolutely destroyed our expectations on the robot parade. <laughs> um, just incredible work. Uh, big thanks to Phil, Matt, and Linda uh, for piecing that together for us. Uh, and lastly, uh, some of you uh, wound down your event time uh, at Penny Park uh, with some relaxing silent fireworks, uh, which was astonishingly so much more silent than I expected it to be. Um, the fireworks were quiet. I can't talk. Um, uh, but big thanks, uh, especially uh, to Rachel and Connor uh, for putting that together. Wonderful job. Neither of which are here, but a, but a big round of applause. All right. Thank you all. And in fact, I have some. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the video.
Hi, uh, I'm Yar Wu. I was the editor in chief for this year's Hunt, which meant that. Which meant that I had the honor of working with, I think, the most talented, awe-inspiring puzzle creators in the world. So please give them a big hand. Uh, I have another caveat. I wrote a lot of these notes last night, and I don't really remember a lot of what happened last night. So I hope that past me did a good job, because here we go. I'm going to be talking about all the metas in this year's hunt. So uh, if you, there's going to be a lot of spoilers. If you don't want spoilers, then I'm not exactly sure. Maybe just like knock yourself unconscious for 15 minutes or something. I, I really have no idea. So, all right. So uh, we started off with the Grand Castle. Um, the flavor text in uh, this. Oh, sorry. The flavor text in this in this land hinted at Six Flags, which is a theme park, which is cool. Uh, Six Flags over Texas, the Texas Panhandle. And the aha here was that the Texas Panhandle has these 26 counties that are arranged in this nice little grid. Uh, each one of those uh, counties corresponds to a letter. And the, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the, uh, each of the answers was two words, and the second word corresponded to one of the counties in the Panhandle. And the first word, the first letter matched with one of the six entities that represented the six flags over Texas. So that was your final ordering. And by doing that and converting the counties to a letter, you got the word oil men. <laughs> uh, the, next, the next meta was uh, storybook forest. So here you had eight words that you could place into this 11 by nine crisscross grid. And here you see that there's two sort of gaps in the grid, and if you read across those gaps, it spelled the answer, which was furry tails, which is why the, uh, the animatronics, they needed that to be better, I guess. <laughs> Spaceopolis. So, uh, Spaceopolis, funnily enough, the name Spaceopolis, we come, came up with after five seconds or so, and it was just our working title, and then as kind of the year went on, some of us, especially me, were very fond of the name, and so we just ended up keeping it, even though it's kind of silly. Uh, <laughs> the first step for the Spaceopolis meta was to notice that the comets on top of each of the, of each of the puzzles, sort of, there were, there were many comets and stars, and if you arranged all the puzzles so that the comets went from left to right, and then indexed into the name, of, into the solution by the number of stars, you got the intermediate phrase, which was Hegu Crater. And if you Googled Hegu Crater or knew about it, uh, it's a crater on the dark side of the moon. And the dark side of the moon clued the Pink Floyd album, The Dark Side of the Moon. So that was kind of the first step of this meta puzzle. Uh, the second part of the puzzle was to get super, super high and listen <laughs> to the dark side of the moon. And if you did that, you not only could solve this puzzle, but also all of the secrets of the universe became clear. And then you came down to Earth and your teammates told you, no, actually the real way to solve the puzzle is to match up each of the answers with tracks from the dark side of the moon. They're rough uh, synonyms of kind of like how, uh, for example, the, you know, the, the track money matched with the answer greenbacks. You sorted those in track order and took the diagonal to find the final answer, which was prism break. Get it? <laughs> This was Wizard's Hollow. Uh, all of the answers were rough synonyms of phrases X of Y, where X was a body or animal part. So similar to the Macbeth poem, where we just talk about eye of newt and things like that. So uh, those, were the, uh, yeah, those were the phrases that were used. So bureau was chest of drawers, etc. cetera. Um, you then sorted the answers in alphabetical order and took the quantity of ingredient indexed into the phrase, and you got the answer nutritious grub. Um, I was sad that we didn't get to use some of our choices. We had cock of the walk, but we rejected that one. Uh, we had butt crack of dawn, and my favorite was uh, armpit of America. I really wanted to use that one, but we were unable to, so. This was uh, the balloon vendor at Harvard Balloon University, where... Uh, the, the, the aha that you had to get here were all the A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's, because Harvard doesn't have F's, 
in the answer words could be grade inflated to A's as they, as they, do, as they do at Harvard, and those would form uh, additional words. And then you could pair up the deflated and inflated words based on the course title into, uh, and, and pair them up and index using the number of units in the course to spell the intermediate answer aviation. But of course, you then had to come back down to earth, deflate that, and get the answer eviction. <clears throat> I like this one a lot. Now this was yesterday land, so all of the answers in this meta were kind of outdated, obsolete things, and the aha that you had to get here was to make them into their modern day equivalents, or at least their, uh, at least a bunch of 40-somethings idea of what modern equivalents <laughs> actually are, which may or may not be, uh, be accurate to you young folks out there. Uh, but some of these, yeah, some of these I know are good. Some of them I was like, I'm not sure whether people still say this anymore, but we'll kind of go with it. Um, you could then fill in the, uh, <laughs> you could then fill in the four audio, uh, outdated audio equipment uh, pieces down at the bottom of the puzzle that gave you an intermediate message to go back up and read under the colored numbers to spell the answer outdated stereotypes. Um, this, uh, this puzzle was directly inspired by my first visit as a 30-year-old to the Enchanted Tiki Room at Disney World, where I sat through and I was like, wow, I guess they're still doing this. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have ever been there. <laughs> this was the Big Top Carnival carousel, and all of these were related to Kentucky, Kentucky Derby winning horses. So each of these matched one word exactly with a Kentucky Derby winning horse. The other word matched the other word in the horse name by exactly one letter. And you sorted the ho horses in chronological order, extracted the letter, and you got the answer, stir up drama. Um, one team, at least one team that I know of, got one feeder and just guessed, straight guessed the answer based on the flavor text and, and, the, and the pun. So uh, good, good on that team. Or bad, actually. I don't know. Should I, should I be encouraging that or not? I'm not really sure. Uh, those were, so those were the inner lands, and then we went to the outer lands. So here was Creative Pictures Studios. So as most of you probably know, the gimmick for this round was that all the answers were? Emoji. And this aha was varying degrees of difficulty for various teams. Uh, I'm going to show you. This is a good. This is a team that, that got it pretty quick. This is their answer submission log for a puzzle that uh, <laughs> that solved to the picture of a dog. Dog face. Dog face emoji. And then boom, they got the answer. That was amazing. That was like super super close. Yeah, nice work. Uh, this is, I'm going to show you a more typical example of what was going on here. This, this, this puzzle was one that solved to a picture of a desert island, and the answer was the emoji desert island. So I'm only going to show the last couple because there were like 300 guesses before this of various <laughs> desert island, marooned, uh, castaway, anything they could think of, just anything going on there. But here are the last couple. Nantucket, Pelham, Martha's Vineyard, Palm. We'll make mojito for answer. This is a palm tree on an aisle. <laughs> then finally the palm tree, then I can't believe you've done this, and then the desert island emoji. The, the meta for this puzzle, uh, you had to arrange these emoji so that following the arrows roughly gave you the plot points of various movies. Um, this was a little hard to do. You had to figure out sort of like where the overlaps were for the different plots for these different movies. So for example, Cinderella, you go from uh, the uh, fairy to the pumpkin to midnight to the high-heeled shoe and then finally true love. Uh, and you had to just kind of put those all in there. And when you did that, you got two messages. The first one was by indexing into the actual emoji name you could get the first part of the answer, which was some real glee and, and then you could use the colored arrows to index into the movies to get a lot of soul. So the final answer was some real glee and a lot of soul. This was our hardest meta, I think. Uh, next was my personal favorite round, the Safari Adventure. So this was a uh, total nightmare to construct and uh, <laughs> Yeah, and props to, uh, to, to Ian uh, Tullis, who, who's, the, who's the driving force behind this. So this was a ton of animals, and uh, as you kind of, each, each puzzle had multiple answers, and 
when you started solving these puzzles, you unlock these keepers, and you could form the animals into groups and kind of assign them to various keepers. So here's one, uh, the pig, the rabbit, and the snake are all Chinese zodiac animals. They fed into this Chinese zodiac meta, and then the snake, the zebra, the hyena, the snake again, because remember each, each, each uh, animal had multiple answers, were all striped, so they fed into another one, and so on and so forth. So you had this huge web of animals and keepers. And as you were solving, you kind of had to have the aha that all of the keepers were, were solvable while you were missing an animal, and that animal was always the tiger. So the tiger belonged in all these sets, and there was no tiger puzzle, but after solving the keeper, you could derive what that tiger answer happened to be. So that was kind of the hook for the entire round. It was brilliant, and you should have seen you know, us on the Metastructure team every time we were trying to like juggle around answers and make sure that everything was okay. I felt like one of those conspiracy theorists with like the... <laughs> The thumbtacks and the string, just trying to figure out like which pieces map to which. It was, it was like I said, a nightmare. But I, I'm very happy how it all turned out. Oh, so then the final, the final, uh, the final meta for this was to take those tiger answers that you'd back solved, and they were all words from the poem "The Tiger" by William Blake. And if you numbered the lines in the poem alphabetically and plucked out the words, you got the final answer, which was Fleming lips. I'd never heard of the Fleming response, so I learned something during the, uh, during, during the hunt. If you don't know what that is, it's some kind of thing that animals do to, sh to scare off other, other animals, I guess. <laughs> Cascade Bay. So this was our sort of water park-ish round. The gimmick behind this round was that there were three metas, and when you first opened the round, you didn't see these. It was just that top, that top layer, and those six feeders fed into the first meta. And as soon as you solved the first meta, the second level unlocked, locked, and those six answers that you had before, plus four new puzzles, fed into a second meta, which was a 10-answer meta, and so on for the third level. Uh, this is my favorite art of the entire, of all of our lands. I love how three-dimensional and like kind of real it looks, but my favorite thing about this is how apparently to get down to the second level, you fall down this tube and fall like 40 feet onto the roof of this lifeguard house. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on there, but uh, it's a good thing we have good lawyers at Penny Park because that seems, <laughs> seems pretty unsafe to me. The final meta for, ca for Cascade Bay was to notice that the answer words, uh, one of the words could be paired up with acids or bases to form a phrase, uh, off base, acid test, and then after that the remaining words could be paired up by length. There's hop and DNA, those are both three letters, keep and peso, those are both four letters, et cetera, et cetera. And for those extra words, half of them have the letters PH in them. And if you take the paired, letter, the paired letters in, their, in the paired answer, it would spell the end answer, which is adopt wet neutrality. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> this is Cactus Canyon. This is our final round. So uh, this, it was a corral style puzzle, Nicoli puzzle. And because it's a corral and it's the Wild West, it was the OK corral a lot of the answers had the bigram OK in them. And every time you had the bigram OK, you kind of shoved it into one of the squares, and it would overlap with a single letter from another answer that was also intersecting with it. And if you extracted those letters, you got the final answer, which was Doc Holiday Pay. <laughs> and for the final workshop puzzle, you were, you've been collecting these pennies. You have no idea why you're collecting these pennies for the, for, for the entire for the entire hunt, but if you collect all 16 pennies, because you get one for the inner lands and uh, two each for the outer lands and one for the, all the events, um, you could arrange them into this sort of map, and you notice in the flavor text of each of the cards, they clue phrases that match with the images on each of the pennies. So here we have brackets, and you can make the phrase age bracket, and we have something that clues age brackets in the, in the flavor text. When you kind of line them all up, you notice that the uh, Pictures on either side of the arrow have, are similar, but they're off by one letter, so age bracket and bird cage. And when you arrange them all like that and extract the extra letter, you get the final answer, which was, uh, for this scent, I mint all value, which will come into play later. <clears throat> That's it for me. I'll turn it over to Todd. Okay, hello, my name is Todd Etter. I'm the uh, director of the hunt, and I was kind of primarily responsible for story and theming of our park. And uh, as far as theming goes, our first challenge was how do you make people actually feel 
like you're experiencing a amuse amusement park because most of the time when you do a mystery hunt, people set up these tools and they scrape all the puzzles off the site and then they're just pulling them off a spreadsheet and you may not even, oh, there's a page with the art on the thing? I didn't even know. You know so we wanted to make it compelling uh, that actually feel like a theme park. So the park map itself looked like a map with folds and creases. Uh, and as far as theming, whenever you solved a puzzle and entered it in, in, into our uh, automated answer checker, which we'll be talking about later perhaps, uh, that you got a sound that corresponded to the land that you were in. I don't know, some people probably hated it. Hopefully a lot of you liked it. Some of you may be, would someone please turn off those sounds? You know. Uh, but the nice thing was when you, you know, uh, we as left out have our own internal applause sounds when we solve puzzles. Uh, and it's, it's a nice little boost, you know. And we thought if you could hear the land uh, that it was in and you were working on a meta, maybe you'd be like, oh, someone solved a water park one. I can look at that meta again because I know that's what that was for. Uh, so I don't know if you realize that, but each round had a different sound associated with it. So that was one of the theming things we did. And another theming thing that we thought was really important is traditionally mystery hunts. Uh, nothing wrong with this because it's probably the very, very smartest choice to make is that every puzzle is simply words with a link. That is probably the way to go, but we decided for our theme park, we want to have art for each uh, ride. And I know that Natalie Parisi, big hand for Natalie. Uh, <laughs> She had a baby on like December 22nd. And she delivered all her art on December 21st. So, so we were like, I was trying to be a humane person whenever I talked to her, how are you doing? Is the baby okay? Have you had the baby yet? Uh, uh, please get us the art as possible before I take it. Um, so so I, it, I probably wasn't the nicest person when having those interactions with her. And so, uh, yeah. Congratulations to her and Nick for a uh, shiny new baby. Uh, and we're gonna send them a shiny new baby. Well, they, they technically are, I guess. Uh, this is what happens when you sleep four hours over the course of four days. Uh, we're sending her as a baby gift, a baby blanket uh, with all the different things on it. So uh, I guess I spoiled that gift for her, didn't I? So, so now we have to actually do that, don't we? <laughs> Oops. Well, congratulations, Natalie uh, and Nick. So there you go. Uh, oops. Uh, so when you went into a round, you saw that every puzzle was actually a ride, and it was a different, unique ride, and it felt like you were actually there. I don't know if any of you felt that, but that's what was our hope was. Uh, as far as story, thank you, the four people. Okay. Uh, as far as our story. Uh, mystery hunts tend to have people that really like story and other people that love puzzles, and that's great. This, what's so great about the hunt is there's so many different things for so many different interests. We wanted to focus on one character. We didn't really want to have a convoluted story. Uh, we wanted to focus on this uh, woman named Penny, whose grandmother founded this park, uh, who had its glory days and then kind of went on dark times. And uh, big round of applause for Summer Herrick, who played a wonderful <laughs> Penny. Stand up, Summer. Stand up. And for our main character of Penny, it's obviously impossible for one person to play all the incarnations. I think you saw that our clown aged uh, with growing a beard during the hunt. I don't know how that happened and got a little bit shorter uh, and, and much better looking, I think. Uh, so one thing that we felt was important, it's impossible to have one character, one person play all the characters. But for the lead teams, we really felt like we wanted to have the same penny for all those lead teams. And in fact, some of the lead teams said, we never saw any other, whoa, what just happened? Uh, we never saw any other uh, people playing that. That's because Summer went way beyond, beyond what is humane uh, and played all those character interactions for all those people. And if you unlocked the Outer Lands reveal with Penny, uh, we went ahead and opened the lands, but we felt it's so important to not send an alternate penny to your classroom, because that would kind of uh, break the illusion a little bit. So we went ahead and unlocked your editor lands for you and then sent Penny to you afterwards. So that was one thing that we felt was important. So as far as the story, this character Penny, uh, she inherits the park when her grandmother unexpectedly dies. And this was sort of revealed in some really awesome videos that we, we had. And they're on the website. If you haven't seen them, you should go look at them. Uh, we felt like if we made the videos interesting and entertaining, it would sort of force people to watch them uh, in a fun way, right? Like, I really want to see these things. Uh, and so that was our hope. Hopefully you liked them. Uh, and it kind of was a way of telling the story of this character and making you emotionally attached to her so that when you got to the end game, you really 
you really cared for. A lot of times in puzzle hunts, you know, there's characters, but you really don't, you know, okay, that's great, you're so-and-so. But uh, we wanted, when you saw Penny, to really empathize with her plight. And so that was, that was our hope with our story. Um, so her journey is that when she inherits the park, uh, she gets a series of letters from her grandmother uh, that was the way for her to take over the park. But unfortunately, this didn't happen because the grandmother died early, uh, and so Penny is forced to discover this through the final runaround. So after you put the pennies together, uh, the, our winning team was sent on a runaround where a statue moved aside, and they went into the underground of the park, which is the MIT tunnels. And so Penny took the winning team on a journey throughout. But right before that, you had to connect to each of our outer lands emotionally. So rather than have a single large runaround, which uh, is historic and traditional, we think that's awesome, but often some runarounds, uh, the lead people sort of read all the clues and then run to the next site, and if you're in the back, maybe you can't see it. You know, sometimes that's great, but we wanted to have, uh, and credit to Inception for sort of innovating with this, is 10 separate runarounds, one for each, where you could split up your team uh, and say, you know, go all over, everyone experience a runaround. We thought that was really important. Each of these rounds, uh, the runaround was themed after that particular land. So, for example, Cactus Canyon, uh, you looked at a thing and you connected things and you went, draw, and then you drew a letter, right? Uh, Wizard's Hollow was a literal runaround on the alchemist statue. Uh, what's that? A digital, or literal, if some of you are really active, I guess you could climb up on it. Uh, my, fa my favorite runaround was the... Run around of entirely emojis. <laughs> Walk to building 14S100. Look, look straight forward at the humanities and science libraries. Write the second letter of science and so on. And then walk to blah, blah, blah. And that's, so that's how that worked. Uh, so these will all be on the site. This one's really fun. They're all fun. So you should go do them even though I spoiled a couple of them for you. Right now, okay. All right, uh, then after you got um, the answer to each one of these runarounds was a uh, action that you had to display for the park to show that you loved the park. For example, Cactus Canyon was epic yodel. So that meant one of your teammates would have to yodel uh, at the heart of the park. Another one was perform regicide. So you had to reenact a famous regicide uh, and so forth. We had to have some waivers for that, I think. Uh, and uh, let me see if that's, okay. So uh, our winning team, uh, and we're gonna say their names together, if we can do this, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, Woosh, is that right? Woosh, Galactic Trendsetters, Meow. Okay, so on three, one, two, three. Woosh, Galactic Trendsetters, Meow. Which really eats up a lot of time when you're interacting with them every single phone call. Is this, is this? All right, so uh, we're gonna have a couple of, uh, members of that team come up and demonstrate a talent. So who's coming up? Who's... All right, so say your name and what you're demonstrating. I'm Lillian. I'm Jacob. We are going to reenact a famous regicide. <laughs> Now lose this labor. I live a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. On, accursed be the tongue that tells me so. I'll not fight you. Then yield thee, coward. I'll not yield. <laughs> One more. Hi, I'm Joshua, and for the safari, I was instructed to do pose yoga of animals. <laughs> Cat. Cat. Cow. Cobra. <laughs> Those are the three C's of animal yoga. Uh, so now they thought they were done because each time that happened, it lit up, it lit up one of the things. So let me talk really quickly about this wonderful machine here. Uh, this was designed by Ben, Elaine, and Ofer, our just wonderful uh, tech things, our wonderful tech team. 
<laughs> ben. I just want to have Ben explain. We didn't build most of the middle of this thing. Ben, what is the middle of this? It is the, <clears throat> it's the vacuum chamber of a scanning tunneling microscope. And he had one lying around in his closet and decided that, that we were going to use that. Somewhere someone's like, there's electrons everywhere. Someone stole our machine. So, so what, the team, what the team had to do when they got to the heart of the park was that they'd been collecting the 16 press pennies over the course of the hunt. Uh, they had to remove them from the cards um, and slide them into one of these slots. So do we have one of the pennies, by the way, or not? If, yeah. Uh, so we can demonstrate this really quickly. Uh, there are words on here. There are 24 words. 16 of them um, are words like there's catch and ante and arcade and press. And you have to realize that most of these words are a compound phrase with penny in them. So for example, penny press. Uh, you put that in the front part here. And when you slide that in, if I can do this correctly, is that going to work? Slide it sideways, vertical. Wish I knew. Oh, there it is. It lights up. Look at that. Okay. So the other words are like buffalo nickel and quarter pounder. If you put that in, uh, Penny's like, it's not quarter park. It's penny park, you idiot. And you know, and so forth. <laughs> she wouldn't say idiot. I had lived a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and can we advance the machine? to the state where you put all this, oh, when you put all the 16 pennies in there. Um, and so let's, we just had the yoga, that advances it to stage this way, and now each of these conduits connects to one of our outer lands. So if we did Big Top Carnival, uh, if someone did the talent for that, it would light up. And if we did Grand Castle, that would light up, hopefully. <laughs> there it is, and another random one, and so on. So when uh, Galactic did the, or whoosh, Galactic, when, when, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, they did all the ten conduits, so let's advance to that. Boom, meow, stab, yodel, regicide. All right, so you got to this, and then Penny pointed out that, well, her four outer land conduits weren't in sync with the six inner land conduits. That's because her grandmother designed these, and she designed these, and this is why the park was sucking so bad. It's <laughs> is because she didn't know about this thing. Uh, it was built by, what was our line? Nanotechnology, that was her, so, so that was our thing. Thank you, I know, it was amazing. Okay, so at this point, we revealed a plus to, to a plot twist to Woosh, and we, and we told them that they had to combine, one person had to combine an outer land talent with an inner land talent in order to get the lands to sync up. So now we are going to have a demonstration of the combination of two talents. So what's that gonna be? We will now combine a regicide and yoga. <laughs> turn, hellhound, turn. All right, that was really fun. So when they did that, look, the machine lit up a little bit more. And then they combined another one. We put chips in my fingers. And we did another one. And we did one more, is that it? Yeah. All right, so we're here, and now the inner conduits and the outer conduits are in sync. Um, and then we went to the next phase. Are, is there numbers on the front? Okay, so that is the enumeration of our final answer phrase, which if you don't want to be spoiled, we had the teams run around in front and all chant together, uh, spoiler free answer phrase, spoiler free answer phrase, spoiler free answer phrase, which didn't work. Why didn't that work? Because Penny, our main character, hadn't truly accepted the park. Uh, she hadn't, and for her to truly take charge of the park, she had to put the hat on her head, which she had been, uh, I'm going to start crying again. She, she had to put the hat on her head to uh, emotionally take over the park. And once she did that, placing the hat on her head, then, let's try it again. Spoiler free, answer phrase, spoiler free, answer phrase. Here we go. A 
It's okay. And there was sound in the room. Make some sound effects, everyone. And then we had... Oh, whoa. Again, stand up, the three of you. Stand up, the three of you, one more time. That was crazy. Stand up, the three of you. Um, and when whoosh, bak bak, galactic friends are meow, they, when they, yeah, when they, when they reached in, yes. Oh, it's in there. One of you go up and grab the thing. Go get it. What's that? Oh, uh, that's Ben's. He needs it back. So just put that there. Thank you. You can put that. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, and if you weren't the winning team and you reached in there, acid burned your hand. It was pretty horrible. So, so, so. Okay, so here's a little, uh, here's a little re re video recap. Mute this. Mute this. Okay, well, you'll be hearing this. This is the team. Uh, oh, there, there, it's muted. So now uh, Penny's explaining they're going to enter the heart of the park. Uh, and now she, the door code is her birthday that her grandmother, uh, that was convenient to have her birthday be the same as the MIT building code door thing there. Uh, we, we had to make Penny born on the exact day. That was really complicated. And then the team comes in. Now they are, there they are inserting the pennies into the machine. Da, 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 da. They're lighting it up. We were very worried that they were going, oh, there, there they go. They're celebrating. And then they move around for the final. Oh, there's the talents. There we have our regicide. Look at that. Uh, so, oh, yes, and then there's the yoga, and, and, and then, the, yeah, there's the camel thing. It's wonderful. And then there's the penny putting the hat on, spoiler-free, answer phrase, spoiler-free, answer phrase, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there she is. This is actually, yes, and then here's the final thing. This, I don't think, is from the winning video. We didn't get a shot, but this is actually what happened. Okay, and then they received this uh, commemorative giant pressed penny that the park had pressed just for them. Uh, not actual size, it's, yes, this would be gigantic. It's, it's, it's not manhole cover size, it's... And there's the coin with the six flags and mystery hunt. Uh, and there's a little tiny car with people on the roller coaster. Uh, there is our winning team, whoosh, galactic trendsetters. Now stand up, stand up and congratulate them. We are so excited for your uh, 2021 mystery hunt, as well as your Mark Galactic puzzle hunt. So that's going to be amazing for both of those. Isn't it just a puzzle bonanza? Right, or maybe not. Probably should have probably should have checked with them on that. Okay. Uh, oh, and then at the very end, as a epilogue reveal, uh, the lights lowered, and it just so happened that every, there, this room has 12 projectors and screens. So uh, bravo for you, MIT, with. Uh, and we got this video as our epilogue. Oh, what did I do? I watched that six times yesterday, and I lost a pound of tears, so that was horrible. Uh, stats and graphs. Corey, come on up. 
everyone's favorite park. Part. Awesome. So what do we got here? So first, just some t uh, numbers. We had our first solve in, what is that, about 13 minutes? That was Palindrome giving us the correct solution to Goldilocks. Way to go, Palindrome. We had had our first meta solved in just about two hours. That was a storybook forest meta by Test Solution, Bees Ignore. <laughs> Every one of those left out was, uh, uh, in awe about how many teams kept solving day and night and day and night. We had 67 teams go all the way at least to a meta, and then we had 29 teams who went all the way and discovered the outer lands. This is fantastic. Uh, we also, some of you might have noticed, we had a we had a structured hint system. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but we ended up giving out something like 1,700 hints through the system over the course of the weekend. Uh, 500 phone calls, that was fun. This is a view about 2.30 in the morning, uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. This is what our big board looked like. And something that maybe all of you are saying wow about is, this was a really close race. You have no idea. We over on, uh, uh, on the left outside in Hunt Quarters, headquarters, it was just hour by hour, it would change which of the four or five teams were at the very top. It was, it was thrilling, and we, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Todd, uh, Todd was joking that we were just staring at this thing, like just staring at it, and Todd was like, this is like watching golf without all the exciting parts. <laughs> uh, every now and then like a green dot would light up and everyone would go, whoa, they solved another one. But just literally like 15 minutes just transfixed, just looking for a blue dot to turn green. It was, it was insane. Yeah, let's go on to the graph. All right, and now the, what you've all been waiting for here, the graph. <laughs> Boom. So dark areas are overnight. The, the, the little dots are the, the meta solves. Let's let you all take it in for a moment. I, I have nothing to to say. I'll let you say something. So, you can see right there near, near uh, I guess, late Saturday night, uh, there are three teams that every 10 minutes they tied again, <laughs> right? And then, whoosh, galactic, turns out, meow. They took off. They got two metas in a row and shot to the lead. And we had to immediately wake up all the runaround people. Wake up, Ben. Get the machine going. Wake up, Betty. Wake up. So, 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 the, and we're all, we're all, sta we're all standing there ready to go, go, go. We got our mascots. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. We have a king and a queen and a wolf. 7 a.m. 8 a.m. By like 1 p.m., the king and queen are laying down, the wolf's eating one of our players. It's, it's, it's horrible. And then other teams started catching up, and then right when I think Palindrome finished their final meta, uh, Galactic realized they had to kick it into gear, and they finally realized, oh, these pennies are actually a puzzle. <laughs> and then maybe we should solve it. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Spoiler-free answer phrase, yay. That's okay, that's okay, it's okay. Yeah, oh my God. And then finally, when they started getting the runaround uh, answers, then, then we had to uh, inject steroids into the wolf and get the king and queen to like each other again and all sorts of fun things happened. And, uh, and then the, the, the fun, the fun around began uh, and so forth. We had some notable submissions. It's always a fun thing to do. Uh, we, we, there's way, way too many submissions uh, to include in here. So by no means does including something mean that yours was horrible. Uh, we had a little running slideshow of things at the beginning. Hopefully you had a chance to see some of those things. Uh, particularly uh, some of the artwork we got for the character breakfast was just crazy. Uh, and for people that do nothing but solve puzzles, like, I, why did anyone spend that much time doing that thing? <laughs> That's what's so wonderful about the mystery hunt. It's something for everyone. If you don't like the puzzles as much, you can do the events or the, or the fun submissions and stuff like that. So we had a puzzle that was the rhino puzzle, okay? And uh, 
This was a crazy puzzle. Uh, as you know, it was in the safari round, and so I had multiple answers. I had two answers. The first answer was directly from the puzzle. The second answer was when you submitted that answer, you had a task to do. Uh, and the way the puzzle worked is, it was 16 different paper airplanes that you had to fold. And there was a website that showed you how to do it, and you folded each one of those into a plane that gave you a message. That told you how to connect four of those sheets and tape them together to make a bigger paper airplane. And then you would connect four more to make a bigger airplane, four more. That gave you four medium-sized airplanes. It gave you another message. Then you had to unfold them all, tape them all back together, and make a 16-page paper airplane, fold it together, and that was your giant rhino airplane, okay? And when you decoded a message on that, and Charlie, who designed the puzzle, this is what uh, the giant paper airplane, he's gonna throw it here. He's gonna throw it, yes. Oh my God. And the guy with the planes on his shirt, that the, you can keep that galactic whoosh or whatever, because that's, that's yours. Uh, so that was the hope. The hope was that you would submit a video of that thing. Uh, and here is the one submission that we received. Oh, see, I'm, I don't, yay. That was, we expected and hoped that we would get 10 or 12 of those, okay? Um, what we forgot was that Safari is very back solvable by intention. <laughs> so most of you submitted the first answer from a back solve. The second answer was much harder to back solve. So then you were faced with submit a, a video of your rhino plane in flight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, go to it, team. <laughs> and so, for example, this is one we got. <laughs> so, that, was, that was from C-Tech. Um, <laughs> but the one that absolutely slayed us, and this is what you need at 5 a.m. Do we know the team that did this? What's that? All right, Codex. This is the next one submitted of their rhino plane in flight. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, like back up there. Yeah, this is like. <laughs> this is the kindest way we've yet discovered. You... Thank you, Codex for a much needed jolt in the middle of the night. <laughs> we were wondering if like, I, that's gotta be right. That's gotta be what this puzzle was. <laughs> oh my God. Th this is a trailer of metaphysical plant uh, for the trailer for MIT the movie. Oh crap, I am horrible. I'm, here, someone do this for me. Oh, okay, boomer. Let's, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Okay. In a world where there aren't enough puzzles, one team was committed to ending the drudgery of everyday existence. Follow them on their quest as they dither on the theme for six months. Write beautiful metas. Port the hunt server to Python 3. Scrap half the metas because no one can solve them. And spend their hard-earned sabbaticals dodging responsibilities and frantically trying to finish the hunt. Watch them overcome unfathomable challenges along the way, putting a lid on career aspirations to write puzzles, developing an encyclopedic knowledge of animals with fictional diplomas, procuring thousands of name tags the night before the hunt, gathering the right materials for the perfect coin, and trying to reason with a homicidal Will Shorts to create a custom New York Times crossword. This story has it all, a fairy tale wedding heated late-night meta-puzzle arguments, a sudden discovery that the duck conundrum doesn't have a unique solution, and finding out that the real answer was the love they found along the way. Featuring an award-winning cast of curious characters, Tom Cruise as the 40-year-old alum who never left, Emma Watson as the team's only MIT student, Meryl Streep as the MIT safety officer with irrational demands and a heart of gold, Donald Glover as the roommate who is thoroughly confused as to what's happening to their living room. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, because he'll take any project to repay his massive tax debt. 
and Mark Gottlieb as himself. Coming soon exclusively to a campus near you. This movie will never recoup its costs, but it's so worth it. It, are the people in that room here that made that? Stand up if you're in the room if you made that. Uh, in the back? They're in the back? Thank you. Yar? Yar's going to talk about one more puzzle. This was the fortune cookies puzzle. I think most of you are fairly familiar with this. Uh, anyway, the, the gimmick for this puzzle, which is used twice, uh, once in the beginning and, and once at the end, is that all of the fortunes sort of describe fictional characters in movies or books or TV, but it only really makes sense if you add a phrase at the end, <laughs> at the end of each of the fortunes. So one story that we heard is that a team was just they were kind of getting somewhere, but they hadn't had the right aha, and they just were kind of frustrated what to do next. They put the puzzle aside. They ordered Chinese takeout. <laughs> they got their fortune cookies. One of their team members read their fortune and jokingly added the in-bed phrase <laughs> while reading it out. They laughed, and then they looked at each other and were like, oh, crap. <laughs> All right, we, oh my gosh, we're running out of time, but we have still some cool stuff to say. We've, this year, we tried a couple of new things, and we also tried to support some recent additions to the hunt as well. Uh, one of the big things I think everyone has got to have noticed is that we had automated, entirely automated answer checking. <laughs> we're really interested in hearing uh, from many of you how that went. And there's going to be a, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to send a survey around in the next probably week or so, just asking teams a number of questions and feedback. But it's really great to hear that it worked really well. Uh, the The, the automated answer checking did also allow us to do, it was kind of went part and parcel with a few things that uh, uh, we were able to do as well. It helped, of course, with the emoji round. Uh, <laughs> It also, frankly, helped us uh, kind of really rethink how our staffing situation would, would be and be able to keep a lot of more people in character and a few other uh, positive upsides. So we, were, we tried to make an, uh, a trade -off, positive trade-off there. We had hints uh, for um, on puzzles that had been solved by some good deal of teams that we made them available for other people as well and tried to actually have those formalize and show up in the system in the, on the Hunt server. Uh, we had at the last moment suggested to us that we should have badges for all participants. Uh, and uh, I, again, we're really here, curious to hear about from you all, but we on, 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 on Hunt Control, of course, it was like, oh shoot, we have 48 hours to get these together. But then during the weekend, we discovered we really liked them, because that meant that we could walk down the hall and see like, oh, you're playing and you're playing and you're just a student. <laughs> and that was really neat. And so it, it actually, we felt that it, for us at least, it, it, it enhances the, the experience. And, and we also, I don't remember which year uh, started doing this, uh, the, the charity supported um, scavenger hunt, but we really like that tradition. We want to keep that going as well. So we were really happy to do that too. <laughs> Fortunately, there's always another puzzle hunt coming up. Uh, the, I'll just put out the, the, the whole list, it, puzzle hunt, Calendar.com, that's where you can go to see all these and a lot more. Uh, it's very important and really we're very grateful for our sponsors and partners in all of running Mystery Hunt. <laughs> Think, Think Fun uh, donated a huge pile of Domino Maze puzzles. Very, very grateful for that. Clue Keeper, thank you. Cluekeeper donated a, a large number of uh, hunt codes for a number of puzzles that we did during that you all did during the week. And Jane Street sponsored the Midway food. Uh, and Jane Street uh, sponsored food at breakfast. 
Grandmaster Puzzles sponsored the snack break at the Midway. Uh, and of course, Greater Good Games was uh, uh, supported us on and was partners with us on the um, scavenger hunt. Also, a big shout out to a huge number of parts of uh, the, the Institute, of course, that helped make this all happen. Many, many departments uh, uh, were willing to let us use their departmental spaces over the weekend. Uh, and uh, of course, the, other, the two that I want to really highlight here are well, the MIT Large Event Fund helped uh, support Puzzle Club and Mystery Hunt financially, uh, and Puzzle Club uh, itself. And I'm going to let uh, Julia, Julia come up here in just a moment to talk a little bit more about Puzzle Club. Speaking of thanking, I also want to thank all of you for your continued support of Mystery Hunt. Uh, if you are a currently a student, or if you're a high school student, you're going to be joining MIT next year, awesome. Uh, please do uh, reach out to Puzzle Club, join Puzzle Club. They do Mystery Hunt, they do other puzzle events throughout the year, and puzzles are cool, right? Uh, if you're not a student, you please consider to donate to MIT, and if you make a donation to the Puzzle Club, that's the, the funding source for the Mystery Hunt. Uh, the, every dollar is valuable. Every dollar that is donated is a dollar that the uh, writing team doesn't need to raise during the year to actually run their event. And the, that means that the more time, the less time they have to spend fundraising, the more time they can write really awesome puzzles. Uh, Left Out really greatly benefited from your generosity a year ago because that let us focus a lot on the playing experience, your experience as well. So please do consider to make uh, a generous donation. Where's Julia? <laughs> so in case you don't know my name, um, as I said, my name is Julia Wagner, and I just wanted to say a few things about Puzzle Club. Uh, so, so to start off, a huge thanks to the rest of Puzzle Club exec, Jenna, Walker, and Connor. You were so much help this year and um, working with Left Out and everything that we've done. So I really appreciate all of your guys' work with that. Um, yeah. Please give it up for them. It also was amazing to work with Left Out, specifically Corey, Dave, uh, Linda and Nina, you guys were the bridge between Puzzle Club and Left Out, and I think that made for an awesome collaboration, especially with all of their work in helping to keep some members of Exec um, non-spoiled so that we could still participate in Hunt as the team. This is most helpful for students, but what Puzzle Club does, obviously, we help to organize the uh, mystery hunt, which hopefully you know by now. <laughs> and then beyond that, throughout the year, as Corey mentioned, we run puzzle events, whether it be from old mystery hunt puzzles, other releases that have come out. And so if you are a student either interested in helping out with that, please email us at uh, puzzle-club-exec at mit.edu. If you want to be notified of those, we would love for you to add yourself on Mora to the uh, other email up there because it's a great group of people and then you get to kind of see a little bit more of the backstage behind Mystery Hunt, either by joining the writing team or um, being able to help with logistics. But overall, I hope everybody had an awesome hunt. We really appreciate that there are so many people from all around the puzzling community and so many different places that come in to help us kind of fuel this MIT puzzling spirit and long-standing tradition. And it takes a lot to bring this many people together and to create the event we do. So thank you all for coming every year. We hope you'll come back again next year. All right, that is the end of the program. I just have one more thing to share is that uh, you probably noticed as you walked in, there were piles of physical puzzles that we have extras. We don't really need, we would be very happy for you all to take, take them if you didn't get them, if you wanted to have an extra one or something, please do so on the way out. Uh, one note, 
Well, one note about the uh, thing on the left there. I don't know if you had a chance to solve that. But uh, if you get that and try to solve just that, <laughs> good luck. Uh, it goes with the puzzle in the uh, creative pictures round called Refreshment Stand. And you will need that block along with uh, a uh, red liquid, a blue liquid, a black liquid, and a tan liquid, uh, as well as the pipette. So you solve the crossword first, and then that's the next step. So make sure if you grab one of those, it's a really fun payoff to uh, print out that puzzle as well. I'm also happy to share that. Are we good? For I'm happy to share that our puzzles and solutions are now posted on pennypark.fun. <laughs> And some of the team left out is going to try to make their best effort to continue to answer hint requests if you send email to hints, H-I-N-T-S, at pennypark.fun. Can't guarantee a five or ten minute response, <laughs> but we know that some of you really would like to solve and get some hints without just spoiling yourself by looking at the solution. Uh, they're up there somewhere. Okay. Yeah. All right. And with that, we are all set. Thank you and have a glorious day. Yeah.